I know it's been a long hiatus, but we're finally back to our weekly videos at uh, the great request of so many. Uh, today I want to talk about an upcoming feast day that matters to a lot of us in this area because we're so blessed to have this parish of St. Peter Clavers. Years ago when I was uh, in a uh, priest in another parish, my grandparents told me of, of traveling through the, through the canal uh, down in South America and Central South America and as they were traveling through they stopped and got to visit this church uh, where there was uh, the body of the saint named St. Peter Claver. At the time I'd heard of him and thought that's interesting. I never would have imagined that I would end up in his parish, Divine Providence. Who is this St. Peter Claver and why do we celebrate him and why are so many uh, African American uh, parishes named after him. And the reason why is he was uh, born in the 1580s. He was born to a wealthy farming family. He felt this strong call to the priesthood and eventually entered the Jesuit order where he thought he would spend the rest of his life in his native Spain. But there was a man there, Alfonsus Rodriguez, who was a mystic. And this man had a premonition from the Lord that Peter Claver was called to spend the rest of his life in the Spanish missions and present-day South America. Peter Claver was not convinced, but after praying for a while and the constant urging of Alphonsus, uh, he finally went to the missions. And there he had a wonderful teacher who had been working with the African slaves for 40 years, serving various needs of the slaves, trying to really advocate for their dignity, for their for them to be treated well, and, and even to work against the slave trade as a whole. And this man became a mentor to Peter Claver. Peter Claver was a man who was very timid, very quiet, very not very sure of himself. But as he fell more deeply in love with our Savior, he was through him able to fall in love with his people, especially the most uh, neglected, the most really persecuted and, and treated harshly, and this were the African slaves. About 10,000 a year were arriving in the part of modern day Colombia where he lived. And so he would go out, he took over for his teacher, in fact so much so that on the day of his, uh, when he professed uh, as a Jesuit, he wrote, I am the servant, I will be the slave of the Ethiopians, which in that time many people uh, really identified Ethiopia really as, i.e. Africa. And he would become the slave of the slaves, as he would later put it, would become his motto. And he began to go out and he was able to free a number of slaves who were converted and he was able to work with them to be his translators. As the slave ships would come in, he would go out to the slave ships, get on board, go down to the depths of where the slaves were caught and are uh, 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 actually chained, and he would serve them and try to communicate with them God's love and feed them and, and, and clothe. He would then follow them over to where they sadly and minister to their needs. Uh, when they, he would find out where they were being sent, he would go out to the farms and he would also minister there. Often the, the people of the plantations, the owners would try to get him to stay in their, in, their, in their homes and he would refuse. He would always stay only in the slave quarters with the slaves. He wanted to make sure that the slaves knew that he was there as God's messenger to show them his love. He also worked uh, to uh, advocate for the dignity of the slaves, but also work among criminals and convert many before their deaths. He worked among the upper classes to, again, remind them of God's, of their need for God and of their need to, to really advocate for the good things God desires for all his people. He worked for about 40 years doing this backbreaking work. It is said by the end of his life, he had baptized over 300,000 uh, slaves and that he brought so many others to Christ, even from other communities. Uh, the last few years of his life were very sad for him. He was very sickly, uh, often neg neglected, and yet he still just worshiped the Lord and lifted up his sufferings uh, for uh, the souls. And only after his death did many people awaken again to all the work he had done, and the many, many hundreds of thousands of people, uh, slaves as well as the non-slaves whom he had affected, and how he affected the whole society at the time to uh, really recognize the dignity of their fellow human in, in a much deeper way than they had before and would eventually lead them to end the slave, slave, the slave trade. He was later canonized by Pope Leo XIII. He was canonized along with his earlier mentor, Alphonsus Rodriguez, the lay brother who had told him, God is calling you to serve the rest of your life in the Spanish missions. The two of them were canonized and recognized as saints together. Saints beget saints. May we be such saints, and may we advocate always for the dignity of every human person, from conception to natural death. Amen.